I'm Racers Marshall Pruitt. We are here with a fascinating gentleman in the Mobile One 12 Hours of Sebring Paddock, Mark Vame with this MDK Motorsports team. Massive presence in the Porsche Carrera Cup North America. I swear you're running about 97 cars. We'll talk about that later, but didn't want to talk to you about the cars and racing themselves so much, Mark. You and your wife have launched a really important initiative taking yep. part in studying brain health of athletes. Racing is one of the big worlds that you're obviously involved in, but yep. we know about concussions. We hear about a lot of that in football and such. It was fascinating to read you and your wife said, that happens here as well. It might not be the gridiron and big public tackles, but there's a lot of brain health studies we haven't done in racing. Tell folks about this initiative. Well, I mean, as you know very well, um, uh, racers now have to be in peak performance. They're watching what they eat, they're watching how they work out, they're watching all, all of these things. But we sometimes forget about the brain. And the brain actually takes a lot of wear and tear in these cars. And I've talked to a racer, I talked to a racer uh, the other day, he raced Daytona last year, hit a wall, uh, had raced with a, with a driver he hadn't raced before. He goes to the next race at Sebring last year, he was introducing himself to the driver for the first time. He forgot all of January. And so this happens. And so what we have to do is really do it. I mean, IMSA has done a really good job with the impact test to kind of baseline folks. But what you know, my wife and I have done, Meg and I have done with the Cleveland Clinic Lou, Ro Lou Ruvo Brain Center in Las Vegas is track people's progress over time. Yes. Because you don't, with the brain, it, it, it can always baseline, but you don't know where it's going over time. And as you know, there's been a lot of drivers who have had multiple mini concussions and then a, a big concussion and they're done. And, and what we want to do is track exactly where they are to make sure they're at optimum performance. So the impact test you mentioned is one that IMSA and some other racing series, usually at the start of the season, they try and do a benchmark. Yes. It's a cognitive test done with the drivers and they establish a baseline. Yes. So in the event of a impact, that is something that if they feel it warrants such thing, they'll have the driver go through that process again, yep. see if whether it's answers to a question or other tests uh, will match that baseline. Yes. But that's a little bit separate from creating a bit of a registry to give yes. back to the sport. Tell folks how this is meant to happen this year and the years ahead yes. to build and establish this and welcome folks to take part. Absolutely. Well, this is a federally funded study, so it's free to the racer. Yeah. They've been doing it for about 30 years. They started with boxing. They went into MMA. They're into football and a couple of hockey they're starting as well. And what they do is I started my testing two years ago. So they then do a full MRI, full CAT scan, see brain health. You do a full day of cognitive tests to really see, you know, from standing on your foot and all kinds of crazy stuff. And then they do that every year to see what's changing. And the key thing, actually, the hippocampus, which is the front of your brain, if you think about when you're wearing a helmet, you come to a quick stop, your hippocampus hits the front of your skull. And that's where you can see a lot of atrophy. And if you're not careful, if you're not watching that, and by the way, you could have had the concussion three years ago. Uh, it doesn't matter. And as you pointed out earlier, it's not always the big hits that no. cause all of us to gasp. Those smaller ones, they accumulate. Again, you might get a big one that has a big effect, but yeah. if you've had five others that are smaller, it's still building up to the same bad result. Absolutely. And what we need to do, and I mean, this, yeah, as you know, we've gotten to be a very, very safe sport over the last you know, 10, 20 years, but we just got to keep stepping it up. And what's really nice about this, and I was talking to Jan Magnuson, who's working with us, and he's going in in a couple of weeks. I talked to Sabra Cook as well, who's, yeah. uh, who's going in as well. And it creates that baseline to ensure that, you know, you're at your peak performance. Yeah. Let's close on this, Mark. So at least in terms of informing the paddock that this is new, this is a recent development. Yeah. Tell folks about the reception you've gotten so far, whether it's Sabro, whether it's Yen Magnuson. I just, we just want to say if he has a brain, first of all, but that's a very, <laughs> very different study. I don't know, that is questionable. Yeah, we, we love him, but <laughs> tell me about the reception you've gotten so far, because this isn't a big profits motive. No. This is trying to give back and help the community. How's the community responded so far? Oh, they've, they've responded fabulously. Uh, Porsche's got behind it, IMSS has got behind it. Many drivers are getting uh, involved in it. Initially, they're a little scared, but one thing I tell all the drivers, it's a federal funded research study, no information goes out. This is all HIPAA controlled and everything. So it's really about focusing on your brain health. It's, we, we're not out there to say, okay, you've got this, that, and the other, you shouldn't race. It's really about making sure you're making the right decisions for yourself. Uh, and that's why it's a federally funded research study. And as you know, 
I'm also sponsored by Racing Dan's Alzheimer's. And there's a lot of correlation nowadays with multiple concussions and Alzheimer's as well. So, I mean, our focus is really on, you know, how can we make brain health better and understanding it better?